Welcome back everybody, this is Brother Mutant here. This is a video, a specific build video for someone that wanted a Mystic Theurge that could like buff and debuff, I'm assuming, not only the team, but the bad guys as well. They're not necessarily a caster to kill things. They'll have that ability, but by and large, they're gonna be there to be support for the team. Now, they suggested that they wanted to be a uh, Asimer in a specific kind. Uh, I actually went with the one that gave a buff to not only Wisdom, but the one that gave a buff to dexterity, uh, that's a decent choice. If I were to pick, again, I would still do the same. I would actually make this, though, a dex-based build. And I say that because while it's nice to be able to hit things, you are not a meleeer. I mean, even at the end of it here, your attack bonus is only a plus 10, which is as good as any wizard that goes straight 20. That's okay. It's not horrible. You have ways to buff that better than any wizard can, so that's a thing. But you really aren't going to be a caster that does, you know, attacks so to speak. You'll have a bow or a crossbow, you will shoot things periodically, and you'll have some spells that will do some damage, but by and large I relied on spells that didn't have a to hit check, so no ray spells for you. There's some that come from being a cleric just in general, uh, but by and large I didn't go with ray spells or touch attacks, so if I were to rebuild it, that's how I would go. I would go minimal strength, a decent 16 for dex if you can muster it, and then the 24 uh, after everything was said and done for Wisdom, I actually stopped at 22. I started out with a 15 strength, 13 dex, 12, 12, 19, 10 for my stats, so in case you're wondering. So I put three in here, one in strength, one in dex to level them off. It's good, but it wasn't what I was hoping for. Um, skill points are going to be an issue for you. You don't get many, and even with 12 intelligence, remember you don't get an extra free one for being human, because you're not human, so that's a thing. Uh, also, a little feet starve, but we actually did okay because all I really focused on was your casting ability by and large. Um, you'll see that come the end of the build when I start buying stupid stuff like weapon finesse when you clearly have better strength than dex. But anyway, uh, I focused on perception because even with the team, you want to be able to spot traps and all those hidden stuffs and caches of money is, is important. So everyone should have perception in my opinion. Plus the fact that you actually have a pretty good wisdom score gives you a bump to your perception. So that's nice. From there, the only other one that made sense, you had to invest uh, three ranks in Knowledge Arcana and three ranks in Lore Religion to qualify for Mystic Theurge. From there, since you already have a, a Bloodline Arcana, and of course we got a skill-focused Lore Religion pick for being an uh, Imperial Sorcerer, we got a really nice bump then to our Lore Religion, so I decided you know, pointing everything to unlock everything, because you know I like to do that, and then I dumped everything else in here, 19 ranks of it, almost maxed it out. So a really nice lore religion. I figured that's going to be your thing. You can see things, and you know things godlike. Makes sense to me. If you don't like that, if you think that's too many, you want to dump some somewhere else, feel free. If I were to build this build, by the way, I would not go this route. A, not only would I not do strength decks like this, I would do, like I said, 16 decks, 24 wisdom, and then 12 points probably would be an intelligence. Um, I think I would actually get, if I'm lucky that way, because we have two bonus stats, wisdom and dex, that, that means my dex could be technically 18. So 18 dex, 10 for everything else, maybe 12 in intelligence, and then a 24 wisdom by the end of it all. Would be a really nice build. And then I would actually go Imperial Sorcerer 6 levels, Cleric 3 levels, or Druid, I'm not going to tell you which one to do, but Cleric is what we went with today. And then one level of traditional monk, because they get off of wisdom, a nice armor class bump. And I would, with that dex and that wisdom, I could have a really nice tanky build with weapon finesse thrown in, which I already have on this build, on a couple of cheap and easy feats for like some crane style, crane wing, and crane repost, and dodge, and some deflect arrows. You could be a pretty beefy little character, self-buffing and blasting away with ray spells and touch spells and being hi -ya! So that would be my go-to, but that's not what you said you wanted. You said you wanted to buff. I figure that not only can you buff, you might as well be able to debuff the bad guys too. So let's actually get into the spell picks before we get any further. First, I'm not going to go over the cleric ones because the only real thing to mention is you have them all, all the way up to level 7. You do have, though, domains. This would be the only thing to really to focus on. And I wasn't sure what domains to pick for you, so that's, again, another thing that you would have to tell me or you just decide on yourself. Since you said you wanted to protect things, I obviously went for the protection domain, 
And then from there, for the deity that had the protection domain, there was also the good domain, which had a decent amount of protection slapped into them as well. So you got protection from evil, protection from anything, protection from evil, communal, bark skin. We got prayer, protection from energy, force repentance, which I don't know what the hell that even does, but protection from energy, communal for free. Gotta love that. Spell resistance, that's a nice one. Burst of glory, that's what it is. Uh, from there, level six stuff. We got summon monster, which I could care less about. Uh, stone skin communal. This one was nice, slash bad all at the same time. I get it for free here. I can't get it anywhere else in this build here in the cleric slots because this is not a common cleric spell. I Because of that, it's only used, then therefore, you can only use it once in this build. Domain slots do not transfer over to being uh, stuff that you can use on the other build, I don't believe. That's okay. Uh, I actually picked it up at, on the sorcerer side of things too because we only could use it once I figured why not have multiple castings in a day but because it's over here you don't get to slot it multiple times like you would another spell that you learn from the sorcerer side of things so yeah, we'll give it a take uh, from there though the last ones you get again holy word which I don't particularly care about but maybe it's useful uh, it's AOE and teammate friendly it looks like uh, but Greater Restoration is kind of a give me, you know, kind of have it as a cleric. So you have decent cleric spells, and of course you'll have spells that we're dipping from from the wizard side of things you will see. Uh, the sorcerer side of things, excuse me. Uh, from there though, let's look at the sorcerer picks, because this one you do have to pick. Uh, since I don't know how you're going to start out your fighting campaign, I'm assuming you're teaming from start to finish. You can go three levels of cleric, and then four levels of sorcerer or four levels of sorcerer, three levels of cleric. It's up to you. I would do the cleric personally first, and I say that because at level one, you don't get an attack bonus, but neither does the sorcerer. At levels two and three, though, the cleric would. So at level three, you'll have a plus two bab. If you went sorcerer, straight four levels of sorcerer, at level three, you'd have a plus one to your bab. So if you're gonna hit anything, you're not gonna hit mush. Yes, your strength is high, 16 is not horrible, but it's 16 now, it'd start off at 15 and your decks would start off at 13, so you really don't have a really good attack bonus. You know, you are here to buff. You will attack, because everybody does, no one's a pacifist in this game, but it's one of those things that's going to be an issue. So I would say go Cleric just to get that extra little swing. And who doesn't like extra heals on their party? You know, there's all good Cleric spells that everybody can use, and everyone can have more than one Cleric on the team. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, for Sorcerer spells, then for those first four levels of Sorcerer, you have to pick your Sorcerer spells too. I went with the staples, Magic Missile, Shield, and Grease. We get blessed for free because we are an Imperial Sorcerer. It's more of a divine feel to it. That's why it's a Wisdom-based caster, not a Charisma-based caster. Uh, so we get blessed for free. We get uh, Resist Energy for free, and you will get Protection from Energy for free as well. All those were though available as a Cleric anyway, so who cares that you're getting them for free? It's just, just know that they're there and you didn't pick them, so you didn't do anything wrong. But it's there. Uh, grease is a staple, though, because it's good from start to finish. Uh, yes, your people will trip and slip and slide on it, but it's a thing. You just cast uh, the spell magic on it or whatever when you're done. Uh, ear piercing scream, because I figure along with magic missile, why not have stuff that hits? Auto hit moves are good for you, because you don't have a good chance to hit anyway. Uh, DCs are going to be an issue, because people will be reflex and fortitude and will saving up the yin yang against you, so I made sure that we specifically picked a decent, not the best, but a decent spell focus, and we'll see that when we get to the feats. I picked Tear Strike because every once in a while you're going to want to hit with whatever weapon you have on or a spell that has a hit to hit check. So screw it, here's your True Strike chance. You got plenty of castings of a day of it. Uh, shield spell is going to be useful for you. You will have armor as a cleric, but you will rapidly have to shed that to get to the sorcerer spells working. Um, unless you invest feats to wear that armor still, and doesn't seem to be a whole lot of reason to do so. So I would just say go naked. And make sure you buff up with some the best gear and spells. So from there, level two is where it gets weird. Here, why I say it's weird. So notice that we have Burning Arc, a retarded number of cleric spells. And then we got these ones here that we actually picked and ones we got for free. Uh, why do we have so many spells? Mystic Theurge does this. It literally takes the spells that you had available as a level one cleric and slaps them over here for your use as a level two wizard or, in this case, sorcerer. So you can cast eight castings a day of Bane on this side of your pools if you want to, or Divine Favor, Fire Belly, or whatever you feel. 
This is why I like this Mystic the Urge idea, because look at your ability to heal. Cure Light Wounds eight times a day as a level 17 caster. And that's just on the Sorcerer side of things. Then we got level 3 Sorcerer, you got Cure Moderates seven times a day. You got Cure Serious seven times a day. You have, where is it at? Cure Critical seven times a day. You got a really nice amount of healing potential. And I point this out to you because of this reason. You are a good, lawful good character, and therefore I assumed you wanted to be positive energy healing guy, or yell, however you feel. Um, so, every time you take a knee with your team, you need to take a rest, any spells, sorcerer-wise, that you have for levels uh, two through six that you haven't used, there's a heal in there somewhere, so your team is going to get healed. That's baller, in my opinion. Notice you'll also have like lesser restoration. My, might even have greater restoration in here, but I'm not sure about that. You definitely have lesser restoration, though, as part of your spell picks as a sorcerer, which is kind of nice, because that'll allow you to strip off some of those native levels that you're... Not levels, sorry. Um, abilities that you get. Uh, from there, Burning Arc was your first pick. I picked this one because it's an auto-hit move. Yes, they can reflex out of it if they're the evasive type, but it still bounces, I think. I don't know that for a fact. But if you come against a lot of evasive rogues, this isn't going to be the spell for you to use on them. You may get lucky and hit one or two, but you're probably not hitting the four or five that you're hoping to bounce it through. But it's a decent spell. Scales nice. Good damage. Notice it's evocation, and it's fire damage. That's going to be important when we get to the feats later. Uh, we got all these other ones again from clerics, and I'm not going to go over them because it's up to you to learn your spells. And again, I'm not saying that you have to go cleric. You could have gone druid three levels. I'm not saying which way to go, what's better. If you wanted more damage, I still think Druid probably would be the better way. But you said buffing, so that, to me, smacks of Cleric. These spells you picked, and this one you got for free. Not that I wouldn't have picked it, but you are getting it for free, so why bother? Glitter Dust uh, is one that is kind of hit or miss. It's interesting in that there's an effect even if they make the will save. The blinding effect is annoying because it can hurt you or your team, so watch where you place it. But... Even if they make that will save, they're coded. So those invisible jackasses or people that want to go invisible can't. They have a negative penalty to stealth. That's basically their way of being invisible. They Invisible, for those of you that don't know, for, I want to say vanish and uh, invisible and greater invisibility, gives you like a plus 20 to your, your stealth. Just built into you. Which is nice. That doesn't mean you can't be detected. This way, you're guaranteed to be able to detect them because they're all sparkly and coded. So I like that, and it's AOE, so I like that ability then too. You'll notice that Stone Call has no spell resistance check for it, neither does Web. That's not really an issue for this build, while our Wisdom isn't stellar at 24, it is 22, and with a reshuffling of points you could get it to 24, and I probably would. Having said that, um, we also went and had uh, Spell Focus, Greater Spell Focus, Elemental focus and greater elemental focus. Now, sadly, that won't work for either of these things because we didn't focus on transmutation or conjuration. It's up to you to pick what you want to pick. I went evocation and fire because, well, let's face it, if you're going to do damage, that's probably the two that you're really going to have. A spell that's an evocation spell or a spell that's a fire spell, or in this case, one that's both. Because it's both, we get a plus four to the DC of this specific spell. Fire belly weirdly is an abjuration because it protects you but it does damage and therefore there's a saving throw the reflex save throw but it's fire so you will not get a plus four to it you will get a plus two and that's kind of cool i think but these ones here were picked because i don't have to worry about spell resistance and the huge effects 40 foot 20 foot bursts anyone that's seen the web spell knows how annoying they are because you have to get through it you have ways to buff the team to get through it though that's nice stone call massive area of effect Physical bludgeoning damage, so nothing really amazing about that. Not teammate friendly, because you can hurt your own team. And then it leaves that difficult terrain. But, again, you have the ability to buff your team to make difficult terrain not difficult. And therefore, useful, right? Sense vittles for the obvious reason, because eventually you're going to want to do damage. I don't care who you are in this game. Everybody wants to hurt something. So sense vitals is an obvious pick. I only pick Sense Vitals just so you know it's a level 2 spell. I only pick it when you have access to the level 4 spell at the same time. So once you see it pop up, it should say 2, 3, and 4 uh, spells that you can pick. That's your cue to get Sense Vitals, and I don't know what you want at level 3, but at level 4 I get Greater Invis. And the reason for that is they both chime in at the same time. You want them both at the same time, because you want to be Greater Invisible for long periods of time, you know, decent periods of time, so that you can do Sense Vital attacks 
for sneak attack damage for that same amount of time. That's the reason that they pair so nicely, in my opinion. And again, web for crowd control, stone call for crowd control. That's the reason for those spells. Even glitter does for a little bit with that blinding ability potential to it. So this crowd control ability is what we're focused on here. Level three, again, you've got one spell that you picked, a bunch of cleric stuff, which we're not gonna go over, and then the spells that you got, as well as the one you got for free. So you got four spell picks of yourself this time. So I got Stinking Cloud, which may seem weird. Protection from Arrows Communal, because Protection from Arrows and Protection from Arrows Communal is not a cleric-based spell, i.e. you have to get it as a wizard or a sorcerer for you to be able to use it. That's a good spell. It's not going to be great at the end of the game when people are using magic bows every time you fight somebody, but not everyone has magic bows. Some people just are using a short bow, and it turns out that they just have really good shooting skills. So protection from arrows will go a long way for keeping your team alive. There's no cost to it. It's a one-hour buff. That's a long, long buff, and you will actually get the full DR-10 against uh, we uh, ranged weapons, unless they're magic and you can absorb up to 100 points and in this case you will be able to use that full 100 points of damage absorption potential so that's basically like 100 free ranged hit points so to speak a really decent buff and you can cast it multiple times so when it wears off on somebody or most of your team feel free to recast it it's definitely worth it in my opinion also went see invisibility communal i don't know if this was available as a cleric i didn't see it um true seeing is available but that's a single target one this one's an ally buff and at 10 minutes per caster level and 17 caster levels by the end of this level 20 build, you can laugh it on your team for 170 minutes. That's a pretty good buffer when you got invisible things bothering you. Slow for some crowd control. Notice it's also teammate friendly. So you can cast it at your feet or at someone else's feet. So we get the tank up in front, blast the whole team around him with some slow, and you'll be very happy that you were there. Protection from energy is a free one that you got for being that... Um, Emperor Sorcerer, whatever the hell they call it, Imperial Sorcerer. So it's there, you'll have it, you probably won't use it very much. Level 4, we went with Rainbow Pattern, again teammate friendly, at least according to the tooltip anyway. Haven't really used it, so I really couldn't tell you, but I'm just going by the picture. Affects enemies only, a 20 foot burst, and a decent chance. Now, many would say, why bother? It's a will save, uh, if uh, you have too many hit dice, you out level it. I don't know a lot of monsters in this game that have more than 24 hit dice. I'm sure there exist, but the ones that you're going to come across, they'll have minions around them. So yeah, maybe you won't get the boss, but you'll get all his little buddies and cripple their little asses, and then you can focus fire on the boss or pick out single targets of the little minions, wiping them off while they're distracted with this fascination of whatever on them spell. So that's why Rainbow Pattern. Uh, a bunch of good spells, of course, from Cleric, just to point out, you do get Delay Poison Communal. On the cleric side of things, we're getting it, of course, free here now as a sorcerer at level 4, which means it's a level 3 cleric spell. But we get 7 uses per day right here. That's an hour buff. Teammate hour buff. Look at how awesome that is. And now let me just backpedal just to show you now why I picked Stinking Cloud. This is a poison. Because it's a poison, if you've already buffed everybody from your cleric side with Delay Poison Communal, then everybody on your team is immune to the effects of Stinking Cloud. Stinking Cloud doesn't travel. It's not the one that you cast on the ground and it drifts. That's um, Cloud Kill. We will get that too. It is also a poison effect. This one, you cast it and it should sit right where it sits. From there, you just cast it at your feet or in the midst of the tank that's already been pre-buffed up with some delay poison and have Stinking Cloud on them and watch how much the bad guys hate you for having Stinking Cloud in your ability to cast multiple times a day. From there, other things just to point out, and I know, again, I'm not trying to talk about all the cleric stuff, but a really good spell that I like, besides the heals and the inflict serious wounds, don't forget you have these too. Another reason to go weapon finesse dex base, because this could be a touch attack against undead, which would key off of your strength, or your dex if you're using weapon finesse. Melee touch attack can be weapon finesse. This one's a uh, melee touch attack as well. Or it can be used to heal the undead, but, you know, that's only Jathel on your team as far as I'm concerned. So, attack, heal, or attack. So, again, can be keyed off of your decks. Another reason to go a dex-based build, in my opinion. But, I want to point out Magical Vestment. Again, this is a really nice buff that can be used on a shield or a piece of armor. If you use it on either, it gives a magical enchantment to it. Notice the buff goes up to plus 5 at level 20. 
Now that's only if you are a level 20 caster. We are not. We're level 17 from the sorcerer side of things. But because we're level 17, we do get the full effect at 17, actually at 16, we'll get the full effect of it being a plus 4 bump. So that's plus 4 to your armor and a plus 4 to your shield for anyone on your team. Doesn't matter if it was a magically enchanted uh, uh, leather armor plus 1, I can make it better. And it lasts for 1 hour per caster level. Multiple castings in a day and I don't have to even slot it as a cleric to use it? Yes please. You see what I'm saying? Your tanks should have no reason not to be uber with spells like this at your disposal. Searing Light, I'm not even going to mention it other than the fact that it's different types of damage. Uh, or I mean different range of damage I should say. Uh, remember though this is a ranged touch attack and you do not have a good dex build. So again if you want dex build I'd be more inclined to use this more often. But I would use better ray spells than this. Uh, Greater Invisibility was a spell that you picked. It wasn't the first one you picked. Notice we picked Rainbow Pattern first. Why didn't we get Greater Invisibility? Well because at this level when you this showed up this was the only spell pick that was available. So yes you could have got Sense Vitals earlier but you wouldn't really be able to use it. And then you this showed up, and there's no way for them you to go back and pick Sense Vitals. I picked Sense Vitals the same time that Greater Invisibility opened up a slot. So when a level 2 spell was available and a level 4 spell was available, that's when I did both. Make sure to make that distinction. Okay, That's why Greater Invisibility is second, not first. Dimension Door sadly had to put, get pushed back then to third. If I were to redo this, maybe I would instead of doing Rainbow Pattern, I would have done Dimension Door then Greater and Fizz, then Rainbow Pattern, but whatever. The last one we picked, and again, this was much later in the build, was Dragon's Breath. And again, you can shuffle these to your liking, but Dragon's Breath was a good damage attack. And notice this one is not affected by spell resistance. Well, that's not a big deal. Remember, we have Spell Pen and Greater Spell Pen on this build. Actually, I don't know if I told you that yet, but you do. We have Spell Penetration and Greater Spell Penetration on this build. So it's not necessarily a concern. But when you really have that mark that you just can't seem to penetrate his spell resistance, well, you got a spell that can hurt him. Screw that. Just set him on fire or hit him with lightning or spit some acid in his face. You know, whatever you do. From there, level 5. Another poison spell. Again, you get one spell at this level. Pick Cloud Kill. Make sure everybody doesn't have neutral plies poison. Everyone has delay poison, communal, or delay poison at least on. It'll last for a long time. You slap that down. This one will drift. So you have to you know, face the bad guys, it'll drift through them, then face away from the bad guys, and it'll drift back into you, then face the bad guys again, and you get, you'll get play with it, but you'll get the idea. Neutralize poison's crap, so is poison, spit venom, most of these things are just garbage spells. Again, some decent ones in here, Death Award is a nice one, and the fact that you can cast it multiple times in a day is pretty baller. Same with freedom of movement and restoration. Uh, notice divine power. You may think that you are a fighter, you are not, but if you really need to beat one in a pinch, Divine Power and Righteous Might are two spells that I would not shy away from using on your build to make sure that you're as uber as you can be. Okay, notice that Divine Power gives you a luck bonus to attack rolls, weapon damage, strength checks, strength based skills, not strength, but the effects of strength. Okay, so a strength check is different than using strength. Uh, strength based skill check is the athletics. So I don't know why I just didn't say athletics. Uh, for every three caster levels. Now while as a cleric you'll be level 13 and therefore not get a lot of benefit out of this spell for them, as a level 17 sorcerer you get some pretty good use out of this bad boy. You got 5 uh, times 3, so that 15 levels, so that's, you get a plus 5 to it, not up the maximum plus 6, but so what? You're pretty darn close. A plus 5 luck bonus to attack rolls really jumps you up a lot. Damage output, another plus 5, it's basically like saying you got 10 to your strength just added to you really is the way we're basically saying this man so this is nice and you get some temp hit points equal to your caster level which is 17 at the highest end here so you get a plus 17 to your hit points um, notice how whenever you make a full attack you can make an additional attack at your full base attack bonus plus any appropriate modifiers basically this is like saying you have flurry of blows but it doesn't have to be a monk weapon so get yourself a high critting weapon Go to town with divine power on and just beat the bejeebus out of them. You will have fun with it. It will not last you long. And yes, while you have seven castings of a day, you're probably not going to use all seven castings on that silliness. Death Ward's really useful. Cloud Kill's useful. You got a lot of better stuff to buff with. And you always want to probably keep a lesser restoration and a restoration in your back pocket just in case, right? You also pick, though, after Cloud Kill, 
Fire Snake, Phantasmal Web, and again, Stone Skin Communal. Remember, we got this one for free in your domain, but you can only cast it once in a day. Well, now I can cast it seven times if I so choose. And I point this out to you because while Stone Skin is a thing you could have done, and Stone Skin you can cast on anybody, if I remember correctly, it uses five Diamond Dust to do it. No big deal. And it lasts for like an hour per caster level, which is awesome sauce. You're going to burn through that freaking 100 and 150 point absorbing capacity so fast it won't matter. 10 minutes is more than enough to do what you need to. You will have that fight. You will not use this for every fight. But when those fights come, then you know that, Jesus this one's going to be rough. Buff up with this. In mass, have your team around you. Buff up with this. Use 10 Diamond Dust instead of 5 per person. Get the buff 10 minutes later. If you're still fighting the same fight, something's wrong with you. So you'll probably be better off having the communal version versus the single version. I'm not saying you can't get the other but it's kind of silly from there fire snake was a pick because evocation plus two to dc thanks to our uh, spell focus and greater spell focus fire damage so therefore again another plus two to dc because of our elemental focus and greater elemental focus so a plus four to hitting the bastards with this and while it says there's a blue dot in the uh, image here 50 foot line it's teammate friendly this is the one spell that hits that line that avoids your teammate and that's why it's called fire snake because it snakes around your and uh, bad guys hits all them and avoids you and your team so you have the potential of doing 15 d6 of fire damage in a straight line is it worth it yeah i'd say so reflex save is going to be annoying but again you have a plus four to that dc making it even a little bit harder for those rogue types to evade or improve to evade out of it some are going to get through, but not all, and that's why I picked it. Phantasma Web, because it's teammate friendly. See all the red guys and no blue guys? Assuming that's true, enemies in the 30-foot burst get targeted. Nice range, big area of effect. And while, yes, there's a will check and a fortitude check, and you're going to think, well, gee, brother mutant, this is going to do piss all. They're going to make one or the other saving throw, right? Probably. But if you cast it on five guys in the cluster of the pile, A, it's teammate friendly, so you can cast it wherever you like, B, even if you just crippled one dude out of those five, that's one guy you don't have to worry about or your teammates don't have to worry about. You beat him like a pinata or you turn on the other four that are active, kill them off, and then turn your attention to the jackass that failed the saves. It's how you do. You know what I'm saying? You're crowd control. This is your job. From there, level six. Now, this is the last level you'll get spells from the cleric pool. As you'll see, we have Breath of Life, burst of glory we get to seven and it goes really slim again that's because level five cleric spells turn into level six sorcerer spells and vice versa this will be spells that you pick here will not be available on your cleric side unless clerics already had access to them what i'm saying is your level five pick of cloud kill fire snake phantasmal web and stone skin communal well not this one because you already have it on the cleric side but those other three i could cast as a cleric they wouldn't last as long because you know, one minute per level, cleric level is 13. This is a level 17 spell for the sorcerer side of things. Fire Snake's an instant cast though. And while it wouldn't do 15 D6 of damage if I cast it from my cleric pool, it would do, I don't know why I do air quotes when you guys aren't even looking at me. But <laughs> from the cleric pool, you'd be able to do 13 D6 of damage. Is it really that big of a difference to go 12 points, potentially less? Not really. And it's again, it's another casting, so why not? Phantasmal Web wouldn't last as long, 13 rounds versus 17 rounds, but it would, may not even last that round anyway because once they make their saves, poof, it's off of them. So, you know, but 13 is still a good chance to cripple someone for a round or two, and that's all you really need in many fights. But now here's level 6. Your picks were Tar Pool and Acid Fog and Greater Heroism in no particular order. I'm not married to anything here. But let me break it down why we did those three. First, here's Tar Pool. It's a transmutation spell, but it's fire damage. Because it's fire damage, we get a plus two to the DC. Remember, you have elemental focus and greater elemental focus fire. This is applicable. So it's a plus two to the spell DC check. Yes, it's not teammate friendly. Yes, you will hate the fact that it's like tar that you have to run through and it slows you down and blah, blah, blah. Just stay out of it. Just make sure that your team's either protected from it with fire protection, which we'll have ways of doing that, um, or you could have uh, uh, someone else buff them up with something like Firebrand, and again, a very useful spell. Now, it does good damage, which is why you like it. You will not get the full 10d6 because we're not 
a 20th level caster or a 17th level caster. So your best you're going to get is 8d6 of damage uh, on this one. But that's pretty significant damage. The reflex saver being tangled, that's going to be fun. And then, of course, they have reflex slash strength checks and everything else, which is just hilarious. Uh, and a bunch of other penalties, and they like to fall down. Now, there's mobility checks to escape the tar. So, again, it's going to be slow mo moving through this stuff. But, again, freedom of movement, I think, will help skitter you through this stuff. Doesn't mean you'll be immune to the damage, but you'll be immune to everything else. That's pretty baller. Uh, acid fog. This one, again, is a no spell resistance check. So you don't have to worry about it. Yes, it's high level, but I like those spells. And again, there's ways for you to buff you or your team to be resistant to acid. And in fact, as an elemental, or not elemental, as a uh, acimer, you have acid resistance DR5, I think. It might even go higher as you level up, I'm not sure. But the point is, you do have some acid resistance built into this build anyway. So this only does, I want to say, 2 to 12 points of damage around yeah two to twelve points of acid damage around so if you have dr10 acid protection on you or any of your team that may not sound like much the most that's bleeding through is two points maybe it crits i don't even know if that's a possibility but maybe it crits but other than that you're really only taking one to two points of damage around in many cases none so even resist elemental the lowest level one that you have resist energies for acid would be enough to protect you from most of the damage to the point where you probably wouldn't even notice this spell but again, that's good technique for you. Use your resist energy acid communal spell on your team. Slap down acid fog on a tough, tough fight. It's extra damage. And notice you even get some armor class against range attacks because you're in the fog. It's harder to hit you. That's all good news. That's extra armor for you and your team. It's also armor for the bad guys in it, but they're also taking acid damage, presumably. So that's a thing as well. So again, good battle tactics for you. And again, Greater Heroism. Wouldn't necessarily pick this last, but I did pick it because I almost forgot about it. A really good spell. And it's not a cleric spell, so it's not one that clerics have access to. This is a, like Heroism, it's a, a morale bonus, so it's kind of different. Clerics usually get those um, size bonus spells, like you're going to see here with Righteous Might, where you get bigger, and therefore because of your size, you got better strength and con, and a penalty to your decks. These ones here are going to be straight up morale bonuses, so they will stack. So I can be Righteous Might and Greater Hero at the same time and have all kinds of bonuses to fighting for glory, you know, or whatever. Point is, you get free hit points, you get a better attack roll, or someone on your team does, because it doesn't have to be just you, and it does last for a decent amount of time, minute per caster level. So nice to bonus to your skill checks, your saves, and yada yada yada. So all kinds of good gravy here. Now, again, this is where we really start feeling it because now we have no extra spells coming in from the cleric side of things. Same on the cleric side of things. At level 7, you're going to see a big dead zone and nothing except for the cleric spells that you can pick. Caustic Eruption was probably a judgment call. I like the spell I know has a soloist that you can melt boss fights with this. Uh, six castings a day is more than enough to kill most rooms. So, that's a thing. It does not... Uh, worry about spell resistance so that's another reason for picking it there's that reflex save problem uh, for half damage but there's two spikes of damage that come from this one so you do the 20 d6 you know, 1 d6 per caster level so for in your case 17 d6 and then uh, each of the next two rounds creatures that fail their saves get another burst and another burst uh, up to 10 d6 which we won't get you again you'll get uh, 8 d6 twice but again only if they fail that uh, reflex save so you can't rely on those two spikes of damage. If they make that first save, they shouldn't take damage again. But that may be glitched still too, so keep that in mind. It is not teammate friendly. It's friendly for you because you're not the one getting hit with the acid, but everybody else would. So watch it. Firebrand we picked because, like I said, you have a lot of fire spells, and why wouldn't you want to hurt your team? Firebrand's a way for you to make your team damn near immortal. Uh, from fire damage. Immunity damage from any fire spell you cast. All the target's weapons do fire damage on a hit. Um, and oh, there's even more than that. You've got all kinds of crap in here. Oh, also, if at any point the, pe the people that you buff with this, remember it's an ally buff, you and your allies. And any time one of those people decided, I don't want to be immune to fire anymore. I want to launch a beam of fire at a specific target. They can do so. Fire ray, range touch attack, a ray spell and does 66 of fire damage at 30 feet. So, kind of a cool way to turn everyone into like a beam caster, even if it's just the once. As soon as they do that, though, the spell uh, effects end, so they don't get immune to firing anymore. But whatevs. 
maybe the it's running down, the, the clock is ticking, and you only have like one or two rounds left. If you're paying attention, have everybody at once fire a fire beam right to the center of the boss. Watch 66 damage times six bad or six uh, teammates hit the same guy. That's 36 d6 of damage if they all hit. That's, that's pretty cool. So that's why I picked it. Greater polymorph. You mentioned that you did want to change into critters, and I don't understand how that makes sense as a sorcerer, but maybe I'm misunderstanding. Maybe you, meant you went druid, but. At this way, I don't know that you can turn yourself into it. I think you can. I kind of think it's any friendly creature, including yourself. Um, but you, could, you won't be able to cast spells in this form, if I'm understanding this correctly. Possibly dragon form. Uh, but notice how you get the wyvern or medium dragon-like creature, shambling mound, an elemental, or a large smilodon. So you get to turn into those for a decent amount of time. This would be like a, a, a last-ditch effort kind of spell for me. It would be the, the last one you, casting you have. The poop's hitting the fan. Neither of these are going to help you. What do you do? I, I turn myself into a Smilodon and I start just mulling the shit out of people with my up uh, uh, strength and dex and con abilities or whatever. Uh, level 8 spell picks. Since you did manage to get all the way to level 16 Sorcerer, 17 to get an extra spell as well. You got Shadow Evocation and Sea Mantle. These are just kind of here. This is so late in the game that you may never really see this. Uh, it, it could be once the DLC releases. I take that back. But for these two, these are two good spells. It's not the only ones you could have picked. There's a lot of really good stuff at level 8. But Shadow Evocation, I'm sorry, Greater Shadow Evocation is an amazing spell. It gives us more Caustic Eruption. It gives us Sirocco's, which we didn't pick, and that's a fire-based spell. Cold Ice Strike, which is an instant cast spell for some straight-up ice damage, or cold damage, excuse me. Chain Lightning for Electric Kai Shout for some Sonic single-target damage. Uh, elemental Assessor for any kind of elemental damage. I mean, just this keeps getting better and better. But a couple of those, or at least one of those, the Elemental Assessor is a, a to-hit check spell. It's a ray spell, so you better make sure you can hit your mark with it. Um, I would probably use Kai Shout because it's guaranteed hit if you're going to do single target. It's 17d6 of damage. That's pretty nice. Sorokos, though, if you get really good at placing them and your team's not complete idiots, you can slap some Sorokos down and have some fun. And if you have Firebrain on everybody, while well, you may trip and fall because of the knockdown effect of uh, uh, Sirocco, you won't be taking any damage. You'll be immune to the damage thanks to this. And this one lasts for a decent amount of time. This one, I think, Sirocco lasts one round per caster level two. So really, you should be buffed for most of the damage, if not all of it. Sea Mantle is kind of a weird one. This is a single target one, personal effect. One minute per level gives you some decent armor, and you are lacking in armor since you're not going to be using armor in this build. Uh, at least at the later levels. Uh, bonus to your Reflex Sage, but you got to love that. Uh, and a decent cover bonus to your armor class. I think this counts as uh, actual armor armor. So, like plate mail armor for that matter. Basically, it's a plus 8 to your armor AC. Which means if you're flat-footed, you still get it. But if you're touch armor class, you don't get it, I believe. Notice you're immune to fire with it, though. So that's also baller. And then there's some other stuff there. But by and large, that's really all you really needed to know. Uh, sea Mantle's a decent spell, and four castings a day of either of those. This one here, you'll probably use more than this one, but I can totally see you buffing up for a tough fight with this, just to make sure that your armor's top-notch. Uh, that covers the sorcerer side of things, and again, don't forget, we have all these clerical spells that you can cast, which makes your job, by the way, picking what kind of clerical spells to slot so much easier, because you don't really have to worry too much, because the sorcerer side of things, at least for levels 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, you're going to get the spells from the cleric that was levels 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 6 and 7 are the ones you're going to have to pay attention to, but you don't have many of those anyway. Um, I went with some just obvious choices to me, but you know, heal versus harm, both good. Hellfire, Ray, and you got a lot of beam spells, by the way, but again, you're not a dex-based build. If you did go dex-based, I would feel more comfortable slapping in things like Hellfire, Ray, Scorching Ray, and you get the idea. Matter of fact, you got a, quite a few beams on the Sorcerer side of things that we passed on, simply because you know, Umbral Strike is another really good one. Um, if you did not like the Elemental Focus of Fire, Cold is another viable option. I didn't build for it. If you didn't like Evocation for Spell Focus and Greater Spell Focus Evocation, you could have some fun going necromancy why because on the cleric side of things it still works for their spells too 
And some of those necromancy spells are like inflict dead. Uh, sorry, inflict dead. <laughs> In, if only. Uh, inflict uh, critical wounds. Inflict light wounds. Those are necromancy spells. Harm is a necromancy spell. Umbral, whatever the hell it was, strike, is a necromancy beam spell that does cold slash negative energy damage. So if you had elemental focus cold and greater elemental focus cold and spell focus necromancy and greater spell focus necromancy, that single spell would have a plus four to its DC check. And let's just look at that spell real quick again, okay? Just because it's such a badass spell. Where are you? Umbral strike. And this is available, by the way, on the sorcerer side of things too, so you should totally pick it. Uh, this one here, one round per level, four to two partial save, and you get a plus four to that DC check, and it's a very high level spell. Uh, you have 1d6 of damage per caster level. As a cleric, you would only get 13d6 of damage, but if you cast it from your sorcerer side of things, it would be 17d6 of damage. Half is cold, half is negative. Uh, so even if they're cold resistant or immune, you're still probably doing some damage to them. That's the point we're trying to make here. A note, uh, that it's a decent range, medium range. It is a ray spell, so you do have to do a touch attack for it, a ranged touch attack. Uh, but the, the fortitude save halves the damage and negates the blindness. So that's the part that you really want to make sure it lands. Not only do you want the full damage, you want to make sure that if they survive it, that they're blind for the duration of the spell. One time save. So if they miss that save for 13 to 17 rounds, they're blind. That's pretty cool, I think, and I do like the, the mixed damage. That's why I also like Hellfire Ray, but again, it's a, a evocation spell slash fire damage spell. Um, but a really nice spell for damage. Destruction is also good, which is why you have it here, you'll see. And Destruction is interesting in that it doesn't appear to be a Ray spell. It's enemy that's close range, fortitude save, sure. It just does the damage. 10 per caster level, so as a cleric, I do 130 points of damage, poof. If they make their save, though, it does... 10d6 of damage, doesn't matter what caster level I am, it does 10d6, so 10 to 60, so I'm guaranteed to do some damage, and it's guaranteed damage, it's not, oh, well, except for the spell resistance part, it's guaranteed to do damage is the point, yes, it's close range, probably closer than you'd like to be, but close range is like point blank shot range, like 30 feet, I want to say, so you still got some pretty good range, you'll be behind the tank when you zap somebody with it, more likely than not, um, and again, if you want to be AoE death machine, you have all the inflict spells on the source well not all many of the inflict spells on the sorcerer side too that you can literally cast and just aoe negative energy damage aoe negative energy damage just be a jerk so you have really good potential here let's look one time here at those abilities we have the armor that we don't care about the weapons we don't really care about and shields that you can't use except for early on i went dodge because obvious get some armor up um we went spells so spell focus of some kind in my case, evocation twice, and you need one of them just so that you can get spell specialization. And again, if you didn't go evocation, that's fine. Go spell focus necromancy, spell focus conjuration, spell focus what you feel. Don't do divination uh, or abjuration, but you get the idea. Transmutations are good, conjurations are good, evocations are good, so is um, necromancy. Hell, even enchantments are decent, and the cleric has a decent number of those too. But whatever you feel is more important to you, go with that. But when you get spell specialization, it will be the specialization for whatever you have spell focus in. So in this case, evocation spells. I get a benefit to one evocation spell. Every round, or every level, excuse me, I'm picking a new spell to specialize in. Maybe it's the same spell over and over again because it's just that good of a spell. Eventually you out-level the usefulness of having Scorching Ray leveled up or Magic Missile leveled up or whatever. So you'll switch it to something useful, Dragon's Breath, Fireball, Caustic Eruption in my case at by the end of it, you know, whatever. But if you did focus on Necromancy, you can pick from those Cleric spells and it will give you the option of saying, oh, do you want to specialize in Harm? Did you want to specialize in uh, Inflict Serious Wounds? Did you want to specialize in flick critical? Did you want to specialize in umbral strike? Did you want to you get the idea? So if it's a necromancy spell and you can cast it, it'll give you the option. Pay attention to which one's scale based on level. That's your cue. All this spell specialization does is give you a plus two to the caster level. So my 13 level cleric for harm right now, if I went necromancy, right, I could cast harm with this 
level and do 130 points of damage single target to his target. Walk over, touch him on the shoulder, 130 points of damage to you, you jackass. Assuming you don't make the save. If I had spell focus necromancy and spell specialization harm, which I could do, instead of being 13 level, it would treat me like I'm 15 level. Well, that spell does scale all the way up to 15 levels. 10 points per caster level, maximum of 150 points of damage. So now that spell, every time I cast it as a cleric, I could do 150 points of damage if I wanted to. See what I'm saying? That's what that does. And it, it, other things too. So like if the spell has a duration based on the caster level. So instead of it lasting 13 rounds, for instance, it would last 15 rounds. You get the idea. Point is, it has to have, you pick a spell that has a variable based on caster level. That's why you get spell specialization. I don't know that you can't get spell specialization twice. I haven't thought of that. So you could do spell focus evocation and then spell specialization for an evocation spell. It's possible you could get spell uh, focus necromancy and then spell specialization for a necromancy spell. I don't know that. I never tried. That'd be interesting. And since you really don't maximize either of your builds, there is room for potential there. I don't think it lets you do evocation twice. So you can't have like two evocation spells that you specialized in. But you could have one that's evocation and one that's necromancy, or one that's necromancy and one that's transmutation, or whatever you do. I haven't tried it, but that'd be interesting. If it works, let me know. Uh, there is, if you don't like fire damage, which you know, many people love it, and many people say, yeah, it's too common. The next best one that I know of for elemental focus and greater elemental focus is cold. Then from there, I want to say it's acid and then electric. But that's weird because acid, in many cases, there is no DC check because it's acid. It's uh, an actual physical thing. Not always. There's some spells that make no sense that there's a, 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 a reflex check or a fortitude check or whatever against the acid. In many cases, though, you'll see that there is no saving throw, which is why it's kind of weird that there is acid in there. But there are some that do. So decide which one you're going to focus on. Make sure you've pen and papered out which spells you're going to get. Look at them and say, oh, I've got a lot of fire spells. Oh, do a lot of them have saving throws? Yeah, almost all of them. What kind? Reflex? Mm. And you might want elemental focus and greater elemental focus, which is why I did that. Greater spell pen and greater uh, so spell pen and greater spell pen for obvious reasons. You can get this though on gear, like there's like a staff or a robe or something that gives you penetration. Uh, well, that sounded weird. Uh, there is a staff or a robe that gives you spell penetration or greater spell penetration or the equivalent. And it would stack, if I'm not mistaken, with these two. So there's no reason not to get them and then have even better spell penetration. So. That's cool. Combat casting, since you are a caster, it made sense to have it. I could see getting that before getting dodge, even for that matter. Um, weapon finesse and improved initiative. These were just kind of like picks at the end. And again, if I went a dex-based build, you definitely want to get weapon finesse in there and get it as soon as possible. I'd get it before dodge, or at the same time. Get rid of dodge and get weapon finesse here. Make it a dex-based build. You'll be much happier. Uh, improved initiative, just because your dex is so bad. I figure, what the hell, you want to be able to cast your spells sooner than everybody else anyway, right? So improved initiative makes sense. It's late in the game, but whatevs. You don't have enough charisma or any charisma, so you don't really get to pick those uh, channeling effects. So when you heal your team, you're healing everybody. When you're uh, damaging undead, you're damaging all the undead, which includes Jathel, so be real careful. But other than that, man, this is your build. Uh, I think you'll like it. Um, if you want to draw it, let me know. I'm going to do two more videos. Uh, I will do Druid, probably, just to, to, for my own edification, just to see what it's like. Um, but the same general thing, I'll probably switch the, the points then and make sure this goes to 24 and make sure this goes to 16 or 18. Uh, but I'd still like to keep the 12 because you really don't get much in the way of skill picks, man. Uh, other than that, the other video I'm going to do, I'm going to do two more. The other video I'm going to do is going to be a weird one. This was interesting in that you picked a sorcerer, which is a spontaneous caster. There's a spontaneous caster on the cleric side. Sadly, they don't get full spell progression. They only get to level 6 spells, and that's the Inquisitor. And I'm kind of curious to see what a wizard Inquisitor build would be like, or it's entirely possible that I could go sorcerer Inquisitor and see if that's fun too. Seems a little too cast, blaster casty to me. I kind of like the, the ability to switch spells around, which is why I kind of like the fact that you went cleric. But that's a possibility. We could also do 
Eldritch Scion, they don't get full progression. You could also do you know any of the Maguses for that matter, but those guys are all int based, except for the Eldritch Scion, which is charisma based. There is a druid, I believe, that's charisma based druid. So you can do a charisma druid and a charisma sorcerer, which are the typical sorcerers, and have a lot of fun. And on that note, if you went straight sorcerer, one of those bloodlines you could get could be the dragon, one of the dragon type bloodlines, which means you're doing extra damage. So if you want a damaging mystic theater, let me know what kind of spells you're looking for. Fire, acid, cold, or electric. I'll make you one if you want and do a separate video for you, buddy. But with that, my name is Brother Me. Please like, subscribe, flame me in the comments down below. Tell me why I'm a complete idiot. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.